What's going on everybody? Josh here with Scrapyard Films and today I got another video for you. It's going to be a tutorial teaching you how to get the best streaming settings possible using OBS, Streamlabs OBS, and Stream Elements OBS. They're all based off the same initial engine, which is OBS. So these settings will work for all of these programs. I did a video in the past about the best settings for low-end PCs. So in this video, I'm gonna be explaining the best settings for low-end and high-end PCs. This is all gonna be using the latest update to OBS, which is the OBS version as of when this video is created. And in this tutorial specifically, I'm gonna be showing you the best X264 or CPU encoding settings. If you wanna learn how to get the best Nvidia settings or the best AMD settings, those links will be in the description below. I've learned a lot over the past couple years of streaming, and so doing a ton of research and speaking to developers, these settings are going to be exactly what the developers are suggesting. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Okay, so I've loaded up Stream Elements OBS. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is update your version of OBS and make sure it's at least version 24. You can do that by going to OBS's website and downloading it, or if you wanted to use Stream Elements like I'm using here, you can download that in the link in the description below. So to start things off, click the Settings button. Once you have that open, we're going to see our stuff on the left hand side, but Streamlabs may look a little bit different, but we're going to want to go down to the Video tab. Now for Base Canvas, you want to put this at whatever your monitor is. So if your monitor is 1080p, make sure this is 1920 by 1080 Now I'll put Scaled Resolution. This, you can downscale it to 1280 by 720 I recommend this if you're not affiliated or if you have a kind of weaker computer. If your computer is over a couple years old, it's probably better for performance to downscale this to 720p. But if you are affiliated or partnered with Mixer or Twitch, then it's perfectly fine to keep this at 1080p. But we're going to go ahead and assume you may not have the best PC, so let's drop this down to 720p, and then we're going to look at downscale filter. So they have four options here. Now basically the options closest to the top are for weaker or older computers, and the options for the bottom are for a little bit stronger computers. So if your computer is over a few years old, you may want to just do bilinear or area. But if you have a relatively okay PC, then bicubic is perfectly fine. Now for FPS, you have a couple of options on the left hand side here, but we're going to stick with common FPS value. So we drop this down, we'll see some numbers, and the options you want to choose are all again based on your computer power. If you have a pretty old computer or a weaker computer more than a few years old, you'll probably want to do 30 or 48 FPS. If you have a pretty decent computer, then you can whip it up to 60. Once you're done with that, go ahead and hit apply, and let's go to the output tab or scroll down and find output. Now from here, you want to make sure your output mode is set to advanced so we can see some options, and make sure your streaming tab is checked. From here, we're going to go to the encoder, and since we're going to be using the processor, we're going to choose X264. So under here, we have enforced streaming service encoder settings. That's recommended to be checked so your stream is most compatible with whatever platform you're streaming to. Rescale output, do not check this since we've already rescaled the output in the video tab over here. Rate control, we have a few options right here, CBR, ABR, VBR, and CRF. These all perform a little bit different when it comes to bitrate, but the most reliable one and the most recommended one is CBR, constant bitrate. For the actual bitrate number, this is going to depend on two things. One is your internet upload speed and bandwidth, and two, your computer power. If you don't have that good of a computer processor, then you can't put this number too high because then you're going to get kind of a framey, skipping looking stream. And if you don't have great internet and you put this number too high, you're going to get a lot of dropped frames. So this one you're going to have to play around with because it's different for everybody. But a good number to start at is 3000. If you put it at 3000, then you can see how your stream looks. And then you can raise it up from there if you don't like the quality of your stream. Just keep upping this by 500. One thing to note is that if you have it too high and you're not affiliated or part Partnered, then some people may have trouble viewing your stream because you're putting out too much information for them to download if they don't have good internet. So if you're not affiliated, I really don't recommend going above 5,000, but if you are affiliated or partnered, you can go all the way up to 10,000 if you wanted because transcoding will be available and they'll be able to drop the quality. Don't check use custom buffer size. Let's go down to keyframe interval. This one you'll want to keep at two. It may be zero when you load it up for the first time, but it's recommended to put it to two because that's what's most compatible with streaming platforms. CPU usage preset, if you drop this down, you're gonna see a bunch of words right here. And this is basically saying how strong of a processor do you have to encode this stream. The options closest to the top are for slower and older processors, and the options down here towards the bottom are for way better processors. So I'd say if you have a computer that's over three years old, you can use the first two options. If you have a computer that's within three years old, I would say use these two options, the next two, very faster, faster. If you have a really good processor, like an i9 or a Ryzen 3000 series, then you can do fast and medium, but be warned, the lower you go on this list, 
the higher your CPU usage number is going to be. And you really don't want that to ever go past 40 or 50. That's just way too much. Because if you start using way too much CPU power, you're going to be taken away from the resources needed for your computer to run other things. So I'd recommend never going past fast or medium because you're really not going to see the quality difference down here. Profile, you have a few options down here, none, baseline, main, or high. In the simplest terms, main is for a little bit weaker computers, high is for a little bit better computers. I really never use baseline or none, I always like to choose one of these two. Tune, you can leave that one at none, and then x264 options, leave that blank. Once you've done that, hit apply, and you are good to go. So start your stream, see how it looks, check your CPU number down here, and if it's only hitting around 10%, then you can drop your CPU usage a little more and that'll increase your quality. Keep messing with your bitrate and raise that and see where it starts getting framey. But the two things you're going to want to balance are bitrate and CPU usage. There's a perfect number for everybody, so just give it a shot. I would say just try a test stream out and then see how it looks, adjust as needed until it looks great to you. And there you have it. You now know how to get the best streaming settings possible. If you got any questions, be sure to shoot them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer every one I can, but it may take a long time to get to them because there are a lot of those questions. If this video helped you out, be sure to shoot a like and subscribe down there. That'll really help me out. Maybe consider supporting the channel. That link will be in the description as well. So thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see y'all in the next video. And I want to give a shout out to all my supporters, especially my super scrappers, LMC, HPL Gamers, and Old Man Beta.